Alright guys, hopefully you're not too confused with the light dependent reactions. Um, if you are, we can clarify um, this coming week. So, we're going to take the ATP and the NADPH from the light dependent reactions and let's put them into the light independent reactions and see what happens. So, the light independent reaction, um, we also call it the Calvin cycle. Um, a guy named Calvin discovered it. When you discover something in science, you get to name it. So back then when they discover things, scientists were always rushing. They still are rushing, but they're rushing to get their name out there. So in the light independent reactions, these reactions are not requiring light. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you may hear the light independent reactions also called dark reactions. Um, it's not happening in the dark, it can happen in light, but remember, there's no thylakoids that need um, the light to hit the pigment, so we don't require light at this point. So we're going to see ATP and the NADPH energy that's going to turn into high energy sugars that will be stored for a long time, stored for us to eat, stored for other animals to eat, um, so that life can be sustained. All right. We have carbon dioxide that's first going to enter the cycle. There's an enzyme that's contained within the stroma, and we'll talk about that enzyme in a little while. Um, and it will combine carbon dioxide molecules that are in the air that we breathe and the plant uses with a five-carbon compound um, that is already present within the organelle. It's already present within the cycle. And so what happens is carbon dioxide and this five carbon compound will actually join together and it will produce a six carbon compound. But that six carbon compound is unstable. So what happens is it actually splits and produces a three carbon compound that will continue throughout the cycle. So for every six carbon dioxide molecules that go into the Calvin cycle, we will get 12 three carbon compounds produced. So halfway, I, I'm not going to talk about energy yet. I, would, I just want to talk about the cycle itself, and we'll go back and talk about the NADPH and the ATP. But halfway through the cycle, we have these 12 carbon compounds that are getting used through the cycle. And what happens is two of them actually get removed these ones right here okay and they are getting sent to just become sugar so if two three carbon molecules are being removed they're actually going to join later and form that C6H12O6 and that's our glucose that's the sugar that gets made and those sugar molecules can come and form together and create starches and other compounds that um, we eventually need. Okay, so these molecules become the building blocks that the plant cell uses to produce sugars, lipids, amino acids, and other compounds. So, now we're left with only 10 three-carbon molecules. Okay, and basically because we're talking about a cycle, these 10 three carbon molecules will actually just get put back into the cycle. They um, convert back into six, five carbon molecules. So if you notice right here, these circles, there's five of them. Those represent carbons. Okay, And then we can take those and use them with that carbon dioxide again. And it's just this cycle that keeps happening over and over and over again. And it's all powered by the energy that was made in the light-dependent reactions. So let's now talk about that energy. We had the ATP and the NADPH that was made in the light dependent reactions. So this is what drives the cycle. So over here we've got 12 ATPs that will get converted into ADP, right? We break a bond, we break a phosphate off, we get energy. We can also break that hydrogen off to release that energy that we carried over. Okay. And then when we're trying to convert these three carbon molecules back into a five carbon molecule, okay, when we want to join bonds together, we have to go from ADP to ATP. 
So we get a phosphate added back to ATP. And that's going to drive this cycle to happen over and over and over again. Okay, pretty basic. Now, just a summary of the Calvin cycle. We have six carbon dioxides, and I'm circling them for you, that will produce a single six carbon sugar molecule. Now remember, at this point, we're releasing two three carbon compounds, but those two three carbon compounds will join together to form that C6H12O6, our six carbon sugar molecule. Okay, and you can see that in the equation itself of photosynthesis. Six carbon dioxides will give us one six carbon sugar. Okay, now let me give you some names for these carbon um, molecules because to sit there and say 12, 3 carbons and 6, 5 carbons, it's confusing. So let me give you some basic names. We have the 5 carbon molecule, okay, that's right there, and it's called ribulose biphosphate, and we just shorthand it RUBP. Okay, and you spell it that way. So that is what that 5 carbon molecule is called, ribulose biphosphate. We have the three carbon molecule that's been seen throughout the entire Calvin cycle, okay? And that is called the phosphoglyceraldehyde, and we shorten, shorthand that to PGAL. And then the enzyme that allows for ribo, uh, ribulose biphosphate to join with carbon dioxide is called Rubisco. And that will happen at this point in, with the yellow arrow. So when you have ribulose biphosphate joining with those carbon dioxides, the enzyme that catalyzes that is Rubisco. Okay, so I've put a link down here. Um, when I upload the PowerPoint, you should be able to click on it. You can't click on this right now because it's a video. But um, that shows the animation of this cycle. It goes quickly, so you can pause it. There's no narr narrator to it. Um, but you can watch how this process occurs. So let's recap um, this entire process now using the names. So you have carbon dioxide. Oops. Where's my pen? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. You have, there's the pen. You have carbon dioxide right here. Joining with the ribulose biphosphate. So you have six of ribulose biphosphate, so you have six carbon dioxides. The enzyme Rubisco is going to help drive those together. Okay, it will form a six carbon molecule that is unstable, and so it will split into 12 phosphoglyceraldehydes, 12 P gals. Okay, this cycle will um, spin, and we will get two three carbon molecules and those are going to form our um, our glucose okay and this is all driven from ATP and NADPH now once those two sugars leave we're left with 10 phosphoglyceraldehydes 10 p gals and we want to convert that back into ribo uh, ribulose by phosphate. So when we convert that, we're going to have ADP turn into ATP, and now we're back into the RUBP, the ribulose by phosphate. And then this cycle can happen over and over and over again for as long as we need it to. So the end result with photosynthesis is that two sets of photosynthetic reactions work together. We have the light dependent reaction that will trap energy from the sun into a chemical form of ATP and NADPH, and those two forms of energy get sent to the light independent reactions, or the dark reactions, um, and those two forms of chemical energy get put into the Calvin cycle along with carbon dioxide to produce a stable, high energy sugar.
glucose um, from carbon dioxide and water. And with that, animals, including us, beef, I'm sorry, cows, etc., they can get food from plants, and then the ox uh, the atmosphere is filled with oxygen, and we can breathe, and it's all wonderful and happy. Now, if you have made it to this point, and you have listened to this video, I um, want to give you some bonus points. So I want you to go on Portal. I want you to look at your grades. I want you to choose one homework assignment, and I want to give you 10 points toward that homework assignment. So when you come back to class um, on Monday, I want you to take a look, uh, to write on a piece of paper, write your name, give me your class period, and tell me which homework assignment you want bonus points toward. I will give you 10 bonus points. Now, I would suggest that you pick something that has a low grade so you could bring it up. Um, I'm not going to give bonus points on 100. I'm not going to give you 110. So just find one of your homework assignments. Tell me what it is, and I'll give you 10 bonus points. Okay? Now, we've got a little bit left um, that I want to cover real quickly that's in your book. So we have factors that will affect photosynthesis, and this is pretty basic. Oops. So we have um, photosynthesis that can be affected by the temperature. So if... If it's between 0 degrees Celsius and 35 degrees Celsius, that's pretty comfortable for those enzymes to function best. Okay, Temperatures above or below this will slow down the way that enzymes work, um, and, it pop, and it may even stop photosynthesis from occurring. Um, we have light intensity that will affect the rate of photosynthesis. So, for example, you have this graph down here, and you can see that the more intense light is, so 1,000 molar photons, okay, the faster the rate of photosynthesis. But what also occurs is that a plant will reach a maximum rate of photosynthesis. And so what actually occurs is we have a plateau. So yes, the rate of photosynthesis can increase when your light intensity increases, but you will hit a certain point where it plateaus and you can no longer keep increasing the rate of, uh, the rate of photosynthesis. Um, water will stop photosynthesis. Obviously, if you don't have water, you'll damage plant tissues. Um, photosynthesis will not occur. Um, so there's some plants that live in dry conditions like Arizona, the desert, there's even plants here that have a waxy coating um, on their leaves that will prevent water loss. And there are some things that occur um, that are biochemical adaptations that will help photosynthesis be more efficient under these dry conditions. So you maybe you wonder, how does cactus survive? It's green, it's got chloroplast, how is it living? Well, there's other mechanisms for these plants. Um, instead of going through the Calvin cycle, they'll have um, cycles that, are, are, that differ just a little bit. So, some of these extreme conditions, you have C4 photosynthesis, and this is a specialized chemical pathway that will allow low levels of carbon dioxide to get passed to the Calvin cycle, and it's called C4 because the initial carbon molecule is a four carbon um, compound. And so, these types, of an, uh, these types of plants will go through this pathway they do require more energy in the form of ATP, so they'll have more um, ATP to function. Um, and we see these in crop plants, so corn, sugarcane, and sorghum, which I am not sure what that is, but your book mentions that. Um, we also have cam plants, and these incorporate carbon dioxide into organic acids during photosynthesis in a process called Chrysalis, uh, oh boy, Chrysalusian? Wow, I just totally botched that word. Let's just pretend that didn't happen. The CAM, acid metabolism, okay, that's why we call it CAM. Um, and we see this in cactus, succulents, and pineapple trees. So that's the end of photosynthesis period. We're done with chapter 8. Please pause, review. Um, I know I talked fast, but hopefully you're pausing these videos and taking your notes. Um, 
check out some other links that I'll put up. I'll post these PowerPoints. So you can check out that light independent reaction Calvin cycle video. Um, but hopefully um, when we review on Monday and Tuesday, things will stick in your head better. Okay, I hope that you guys have an awesome weekend, and I'll see you on Monday. All right, bye.